In today's tutorial, we're going to spend some more time playing around with Illustrator's 3D tools. This time, we're going to unleash our inner child and I'll show you how to create a 3D Lego character. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Illustrator and get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is draft out some basic shapes. I've done a quick Google search and found two suitable reference photos which we'll use to base our shapes on. So starting with the pen tool, let's create our first shape starting with the head. Now with the head, we only really need to create half of it as we can essentially use the 3D Resolve tool to turn it into a complete shape. So with the pen tool, drop an anchor point in the top center of the reference drawing and then just slowly block out the shape of the head. Using the direct selection tool, you want to select the individual anchor points and then just using the corner radius handles, just round off the corners that need rounding off. Then moving on to the body, we can do the same thing. So again, select the pen tool, find the center point and then just block out the shape. Now we can't use the 3D resolve tool on the body, but we can still create the first half and then duplicate it and flip it over so it's perfectly symmetrical. So once you've created the shape, hold down the Alt and Shift key and drag a new instance of that shape. Then go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and then just reflect that on the vertical axis. And then move them together, select both shapes, and then using the Pathfinder tool, we can just unite those shapes together. Then using the same techniques, again, just with the pen tool, we want to draft out the shape for one of the arms, the hand and the bottom torso. Now we only need to create one version of the arm and one version of the hand because we can essentially flip that over to the other side. So in the interest of time, I've already gone ahead and created these shapes. So we have the arm shape, the hand shape, and then obviously the torso shape at the bottom. For the legs, we have to approach this slightly differently. So if we created the shape from the front, when we come to add the 3D extrude, all we would essentially end up with is a 3D rectangle. So using the side view reference image, this is the sort of shape we need to replicate. So starting with the ellipse tool, we'll just draft out the top part and then using the pen tool, we'll just finish it off with the bottom half. Finally, select both shapes and then using the Pathfinder tool, just unite those shapes together. And then using our first reference image, we just want to adjust the overall size to match the size of one of the legs. And then finally, the last bit we need to create is this bit in the middle. And we can do that by holding down the Shift and Alt key and dragging a new instance of the leg shape. Select the rectangle tool and then just drag a square over the bottom half of the shape until it touches the bottom part of the circle shape. Select both shapes, press Shift M on the keyboard for the Shape Builder tool. Hold down the Alt key and then just click the outside shape and then the inside shape and then this is the shape you'll be left with which will form that middle part. So now we can get rid of our reference images as these are no longer needed and then we can just look at our individual shapes and start organizing them within our layers window. So to make it easier let's just start labeling everything. So we'll start off with the head and we'll move this to the top and we have the body which will be next. Then we've got our left arm and then we'll just drag a copy of that and just reflect that vertically and we'll do the same thing with the hand. Once you've organized and labeled all your layers, the next part is to start adding some of the 3D effects. So if we go to window and then select 3D and materials, and I'm just going to dock this to the right hand side. Now something just to bear in mind when using the 3D settings is I've already gone through and created this once. So I have made a note of all the settings I used the first time around. Depending on the size and shape and the way yours looks, you might need to tweak the settings specifically to yourself. So with that said, let's start off with the head. 
So I'm just gonna move these over to the left hand side. So select the head layer and then we wanna add a revolve 3D effect. We want this offset direction to be from the right edge, assuming that you've created the left side of the head the same as I did. And then for the angle, we wanna keep that as 360. Twist can be zero degrees. The taper should be left at 100%. The offset can be left as zero. For the rotation, we want the X axis to be minus 18, the Y axis to be minus 26 and the Z axis to be minus 8.1. On the materials tab, we can just use the default material. For the roughness, we want to set that to one and the metallic we can leave as zero. On the lighting tab, we can leave the standard lighting checked and then we want to have the intensity set to 70%, the rotation set to 145 degrees, the height at 45 degrees, softness at 40%, and the intensity at 50%. For the shadow, we can leave this unchecked as we don't need it for the head. Next, we'll select our body shape and then we want to add an inflate 3D effect using a depth of 76 pixels. Twist we can leave as zero, taper we can leave as 100%. For the volume, we want to set this to 10% and we want to put a check in inflate both sides. For the rotation, we want minus 18 degrees on the X axis, minus 26 on the Y axis, and minus 8.1 on the Z axis. Perspective, we can leave that as zero. Then under the materials tab, we want to use the standard base material with the roughness set to one and the metallic set to zero. And then on the lighting, we can leave that as standard lighting, 70%, 145 degree rotation, 45 degree height, 40% softness with a 50% intensity and we don't need any shadow so we can leave that on tint. And then we can just move the body underneath the head. Next we'll start with the left arm. So select the left arm, then we want to add an inflate 3D effect using a depth of 36. Twist we can leave as zero, taper we can leave as 100%. For the volume we want to use 56%. Make sure it's checked on the inflate both sides. And then for the rotation we can use minus 18 degrees, minus 26, minus 8.1. Under the materials we can again use the default material setting with a roughness of one and leave the metallic as zero. Then under the lighting tab we don't want the standard lighting, so uncheck that. Intensity set to 70%, minus 180 degrees for the rotation, 45 degrees for the height, 100% for the softness, and zero for the intensity. And we can leave the shadow off. And then we can just move the arm into place. You might just want to drag the left arm above the body and then position that in place. Next, select the right arm. And again, we're going to use the inflate option. For the depth, we're going to use 36. Leave the twist and taper as the default settings. For the volume, we want to set this to 56%. Again, check inflate both sides. Then for the rotation, we want to use minus 18 degrees, minus 30, and then minus 8.1. On the materials tab, we select the default material, set the roughness to one and the metallic as zero. Then under the lighting tab, don't want the standard lighting. Intensity, we can set to 50%. Rotation, minus 180 degrees. Height at 45 degrees, softness at 40%. And the intensity at zero. And again, we're not gonna use any shadows. And then we can just position this on the opposite side Next, we'll move on to our left hand. And again, object type or 3D type, we want to use inflate. For the depth, we want to set this to 21. Twist and taper, we can leave as the default settings. The volume, we want to change to 56%. Inflate both sides. On the X axis, we want minus 18. On the Y axis, we want minus 26. And on the Z axis, we want minus 8.1. Under the materials tab, we'll use the base material with the roughness set to one and the metallic set to zero. Then under lighting, we wanna use the standard lighting with an intensity of 
minus 145 degrees, 45 degrees for the height, 40% for the softness, 50% for the intensity and the shadows we can leave as off. With the right hand, we can use the exact same settings with just only a subtle differences. So to copy over the 3D settings, if we put our mouse over the small little circle on the actual layer, so on the left hand, select that little dot, hold down the Alt key and drag the dot over onto the next layer and that will copy over all the settings. The only thing we need to change is the rotation on the Y axis. This should be minus 30. Everything else should remain the same. And then we can just position these in place to wherever they need to be. Next, we'll move on to the torso. And again, we want to use the inflate option with a depth of 76 pixels. Twist and taper, we can leave to the default values. Volume, we want to set to 10% and we want to ensure that it's inflated both sides. On the rotation, we need to use minus 18 degrees. For the Y axis, we want minus 26, and the Z axis, we want minus 8.1. For the materials, use the base material. Roughness, we want to set to one, and the metallic set to zero. Under lighting, we don't want to use the standard lighting, so we uncheck that. Intensity, we want to set to 20%. Rotation, minus 145 degrees. Height, we can leave at 45 degrees. Softness, we want to change to 100%. And then for the intensity, we want to set that to 25%. For the shadow, we want to enable the shadow. And we want this to be below the object. And we need to set this to 0 and 400% on the shadow bounce. And then we want to move that torso shape into its place. And we just want to make sure that that torso bit is underneath. Next, we'll move on to the leg. So for the leg, we want to use, again, the inflate option. Depth, we want to set to 76. Twist and taper, we can leave as the default values. Volume, we want to set this to 10%. And we also want to inflate it both sides. On the rotation, we want to set the X axis to minus 40 the Y axis to 59 and the Z axis to 35. Perspective, we can leave as zero. Using the base material, we also want to set the roughness to one and metallic to zero. On the lighting, we want to uncheck the standard lighting. Intensity, we want to set to 70%. Rotation to 145 degrees. The height, we want to set to 70 and the softness to 67. For the intensity, we want to set this to 0%. And then we want to check the shadow and we want this to be below the object 0% distance from the object with the shadow bounds set to 400%. Next we'll select the middle part and again we'll add the inflate option. The depth we will set to 20. Twist and taper we can leave as the default settings. The volume we want to set to 10%. Check inflate both sides. Then on the rotation, we want to set the X axis to minus 40, Y axis to 59 and the Z axis to 35. Under the materials tab, we want to set the roughness to one metallic lever zero. And then on the lighting tab, we want to uncheck standard lighting. We want the intensity of 70%, 145 degree rotation, 45 degrees on the height, 40% on the softness and we want 25% on the intensity and the shadow we leave that set to off. And then we just want to position this next to the leg as the best we can and then select the left leg, hold down the Alt key and drag a duplicate and then move the other leg underneath that middle part and then just eyeball and line that up. Select all three shapes and then move that over to the rest of the body. Drag a selection around everything and go to Object, Group, and then just vertically and horizontally centre the objects within the artboard, and then go to Object, Ungroup, select one of the 3D objects, and then this little icon in the right hand corner with the arrow, which is the render settings. If we click the little arrow, we want to enable ray tracing, set the quality to high and then we want to put a check in remember and apply to all and this will render each object at the same time so if we click render and then just let illustrator do its thing
Once Illustrator has finished rendering the objects, you should hopefully have something which looks like this. Next, we're going to create the graphics which we'll apply along with the material. I decided to create my character as Spider-Man, so for the head, we need to create the face. And then on the body, we'll add some spiderweb details. So select the head and the body, hold down the Alt key and then drag a copy of those shapes. Select one of the shapes, then go to Window Appearance and then where the 3D Materials effect is, select it and then just hit the Delete key and then repeat the same process for the body shape. With the head we want to turn this into a complete shape, so again select the head shape, hold down the Alt and Shift key and drag a new copy. While it's still selected, go to Object Transform Reflect and just reflect that on the vertical axis and then move both shapes together, make a selection around both shapes and then hit the Unite option on the Pathfinder. Next, using these shapes as a guide, start adding the little details like the eyes, etc. As I said earlier, I'm going to base my character on Spider-Man so in the interest of time, this is what I have created. If you want to know how to create the spider web, I'll pop a card in the corner to my spider web tutorial. Once you've created the artwork, you can remove the head guide shape and then just make sure that everything is grouped together by going to object and group, and then go to window symbols, select the first group and then hit the plus button, call this one torso and the export type we want to set to graphic and we can leave it as a dynamic symbol and then press OK and then do the same for the other group. Now before we add the symbols to our 3D character we just want to remove the ray tracing option just to make it a little bit quicker. So select any body part of the 3D model, go to the render settings, turn off ray tracing, make sure they remember and apply to all is checked and then press render and that should remove all the ray tracing options from each of the shapes. Next select the torso and then go to the materials tab and then at the top where it's got materials and graphics we want to select the graphics option and then select the torso graphic and then that will get applied to our 3D shape. We can then use the following controls to control the scale of our artwork and we can also just move it into place. And then we want to do the same thing for the head. So select the head shape and then select the head from the graphics panel. And then we just want to move that into place. We also might want to adjust the color on the head and the color on the torso. And then we can also color the hands in also. Once you're happy with the graphics, again, select one of the shapes. Go to the render settings, select ray tracing, make sure the quality is set to high and make sure the remember and apply to all is checked and then select render and then just let Illustrator do its thing. Once it's finished rendering, you should be left with the graphics applied to the model. And because these are set up as symbols, if you did want to go in and make any further changes, just double click the artwork to go into isolation mode and say you wanted to change the eye color to perhaps green press ok come back out of isolation mode by double clicking the artboard and then that will automatically update the 3d model thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video where i'll be sharing even more tips and tricks until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.